catfish. If right. it's seasoned good enough and you can eat it the next day out of the refrigerator, if there's any left over, that's when you know you've cooked it right. Or you make a sandwich. And that's how I it. do it, yeah. Make a catfish sandwich. How, what, how do you make your catfish sandwich? It depends on what I got. It's two pieces, of, two white pieces of white bread, some mayonnaise, and some fish. Yeah. That's I all have you done need. That. I did. So while we were doing that, I also shot a quick TikTok video of making a catfish sandwich. So how did you do your catfish sandwich? So. It starts with, any time I'm making catfish, I make homemade tartar sauce, too. I think it just goes with it. And that's with any kind of fried seafood. You got to have a good tartar sauce, right? Yes. You have a lot of good uh, fret or seafood or fish-type sauce recipes. Yeah. Like you got a sh- champagne minuet that's really good. Oh, for you shrimp. For shrimp and yeah. you know, crab legs. You got your tartar sauce. How do you make Little your tartar blood. sauce? So I yeah, start- you got a rumelon. The, the secret is using New Orleans own blue plate mayo. <laughs> <laughs> Got to start with blue plate. Usually I'll do about two cups in a bowl, like a mixing bowl. And then I'll take a jar, uh, just a small jar of dill pickle relish, like you buy if you're just cooking hot dogs. And it's probably, if I had to measure it, I don't. I just take the do- the jar and kind of dump it in a wire mesh strainer. Four ounces. Four, it's, so so it's Fourth half a cup. cup. Yeah, half a cup. Half a cup. Yeah. yeah, half a cup. Half a cup of dill pickle relish. And I take it, put it in a put it in a wire mesh strainer and use a fork or spoon or something and move it around to get all you would be surprised by how much liquid is in that relish. You don't want your tartar sauce runny. You want it to stay, you know thick. Thick. Yeah. Yeah, you want it to stay thick. So uh, once I get it drained, I dump it in. While that's draining, I'll take about half of a sweet onion and chop it up super fine. I'm talking like like the bur- like the onions McDonald's uses on their hamburger, you know the little bitty pieces. That's what you want. You could um, food process that. Couldn't you could put it in a food processor, definitely. You just have to make sure. Now, if you put it in a food processor, it's going to bring a lot of moisture out of that onion when you get it fine enough. So you need to strain it too. You don't want any added moisture, and you want about the same amount, a half a cup of finely minced up onion. So put that in the bowl, and then about two teaspoons of hot sauce. Now, y'all know I'm using the Killer Hogs hot sauce, but you could use whatever brand you want. Uh, it, it works. Uh, I'd probably stay away from like the Mexican style hot sauces. Yeah. You don't need that. Or hot, hot, hot. Yeah. I, if, I mean, if you want it hot, you can eat go it hot. Up. But you don't want to put too much hot sauce. You don't want to turn it orange. It still should have kind of a, a whitish tone to it. It's tartar sauce. So I put that in there. And then I cut a lemon in half, squeeze it, catch the seeds. So you got some, you do put some moisture in there. That's the hot sauce and the lemon juice. That's fine. And then season it with salt and pepper. I usually grab my TX and just give it probably a tablespoon. But you could just use salt and fresh cracked black pepper, whatever you want. We've and used then, AP. You know too. something that I always that I do do, and I don't think it was in the recipe. Was I add usually add about two teaspoons of sugar to it just to balance it? And when you asked me for that recipe, I was just going off my head. I don't think I gave that to you. But now that I'm thinking about it, I always add a couple teaspoons. Oh, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're watching optional. the watching the carbs on it, yeah. Don't do that. But, you know, the deal is I don't want my tartar sauce too sweet. That's why I didn't use sweet relish because sometimes you get tartar sauce and it's just sugary. Yeah. I don't like that. I want it to have that creamy balance with the spices, a little, and a little heat, the vinegary notes, the acidity from the lemon, that citrus flavor. That's what you're going for. So you give all that a stir, whip it all up really, really well, put it in a little container with the lid or put some saran wrap over it and then stick it in the refrigerator because it's got to come together. Like it's not if you taste it right then, and usually I do taste it to see if I got everything balanced, but it's not going to taste like it will an hour later after it's sitting and those flavors have came together. So that's my basic, you know, you, if you're having if you're cooking anything fried seafood or fried fish, you got to make that tartar sauce. Sure. And that's so that's the glue of my fish sandwich. That's yeah. what goes back to the fish <laughs> sandwich. What so kind of bread do you like for the fish sandwich? Those hoagie sub rolls you can get, like, I don't know what brand they are, Pepperidge Farm or Cobblestone or something like that, but you can see them in the bread aisle. It's They're like not a, too big. It's like really. a sesame seeded six inch sub roll that's split in half, not just the top cut. This is a split in half one. Take those, lightly, lightly butter them, stick them under the broiler, toast them a little bit, stick them in a toaster oven, whatever, and put you a nice, you know, base of that tartar sauce on the bottom bun. And then come with your, I usually do, like, for a fish sandwich, I did shredded lettuce, tomatoes, pickles. You could use coleslaw. It works great, whichever one you do. But that's what I did, right on top of that tartar sauce. Then I put my big piece of fish on it, and usually, you know, a filet or two, whatever size you can get on there, depending on how big your filets are. 
some pickled red onion goes really mm-hmm. good on it, and then more tartar sauce on top bun right on top. That's a fish sandwich. Now, that ain't the square fish sandwich like y'all <laughs> like from these fast food places. It's, I don't know what kind of fish, probably shark. They tell you it's fresh cod. I don't know if I believe it. But mm, fish sandwich. Square. I've never seen a square fish. This is a Mississippi fried catfish sandwich. Is it kind of a po' boy? In a way. You know, it's not on a po' boy bread. That'd be the only biggest difference to me. And most of the time with a po' boy, they don't use tartar sauce a lot of times. They'll put remoulade or yeah. either just mayo, blue plate mayo. But try it with tartar sauce. I mean, just take I it think to another that's level. The best. And the yeah. pickled red onions take it to another level, too. That wouldn't be on a po' boy. I like serving the pickled red onions just as a side to go with Always, the fish. always. Yeah. You've got to do the pickled red onions. It just... There's something about fish, seafood, whatever, and vinegar with it. It just goes, and those pickled red onions are easy. Like to fish do. and chips, yeah. they kind of yeah. Do the same they thing. always give you the malt vinegar to put over it or whatever. Yeah. Same element. Now pickled red onions are super easy to make. All I do is take a big purple onion, slice it up real thin, you know, in the rings, ring it out. Um, I'll take one cup of apple cider vinegar or white vinegar. One cup of I water. Like apple cider. It gives it a better flavor, personally. Yeah. And then one cup of water. Put that in a Pyrex measuring cup that's microwave safe. I go a tablespoon of sugar, a tablespoon of salt. Stick those in there. Whisk them up. Three minutes. Stir it. Two more minutes. It's hot. It's bubbly. Everything's incorporated. Put all those onions in a container, a bowl, and then pour that hot vinegar solution right over the top of it and let it hang out. You want to let it sit on the counter? Because it's too hot to stick right in the fridge immediately because it was boiling. So let it calm down at room temperature for about an hour or so. And then then just put your lid on it and stick it in the refrigerator and let it sit. Usually they're better the next day. You can eat them in probably three to four hours. But, I mean, they're going to last up to a week or two. We still got some left over, and that's been a week in the fridge. and we eh, eat them. We've been eating them. <laughs> <laughs> they them. Yeah. They've been on tacos. They go great on. with tacos. That's another thing. And fish tacos with those on them are really yeah. good. And you can fry that catfish, Sandwiches. cut it up a little bit, and make fish tacos, and you got all of a sudden you got catfish tacos. You're um you have a spicy chicken sandwich recipe or spicy chicken sliders, and yes. you use red pickled red onions on that. They go great with that. Bar uh, any, you know, pulled chicken with white sauce and purple red onion makes a heck of a barbecue sandwich. Even pulled pork. Pulled pork's great with it. Heck yeah. yeah. Pulled pork tacos with uh, pickled red onion. Yeah. I'm not really, really big on like putting raw onion on stuff. You know, there's I guess there's yeah. times and places for a little bit of it on a burger or something. But most of the time, man, this pickled red onions are, or sauteed is a whole other ball game.